things carry a molecule that provides the blueprint for the traits they express. This molecule is called DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, and today we will be looking at its structure. In 1953, scientists James Watson and Francis Crick used X-ray crystallography data provided by Rosalind Franklin to solve the structure of DNA. If you imagine a ladder that has been twisted at the top and the bottom, you'll get a pretty good idea of what DNA looks like. Its structure is described as being a double helix, and it is twisted to the right to form both major and minor groups. DNA is a nucleic acid and is composed of a long chain of nucleotides. Each nucleotide consists of three parts. A five carbon sugar called deoxyribose, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. Neighboring nucleotides are attached to each other by covalent bonds between the sugar of one nucleotide and the phosphate of the next. This results in a sugar phosphate backbone. The two sugar phosphate backbones in a DNA molecule are said to be anti-parallel because their subunits run in opposite directions to each other. The nitrogenous bases stick out from each of the two sugar phosphate backbones and pair up to form what are called complementary base pairs, forming what looks like steps on a ladder. The complementary base pairs are adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine. The four nitrogenous bases can be divided into two types, purines and pyrimidines. Thymine and cytosine are pyrimidines, meaning they consist of single ringed structures, and adenine and guanine are purines, meaning they consist of double ringed structures. Before Watson and Crick proposed the double helix model for DNA, another scientist, Erwin Shargaff, had reported finding that in the DNA of any given species, the amount of adenine was equivalent to the amount of thymine, and the amount of cytosine was equivalent to the amount of guanine. This became known as Shargaff's rule, but the basis for these rules couldn't be explained until the discovery of the double helix. Watson and Crick built on this understanding to determine the structure of DNA. They reasoned that due to the fact that it was a helix and had to have a uniform diameter throughout, the width of each base pair had to be the same. With the four given bases that could only be achieved if a purine and a pyrimidine were paired up. An additional level of specificity was the number of hydrogen bonds formed between the base pairs. A and T can each form two hydrogen bonds, whereas C and G can each form three. According to the base pairing rule then, whenever one strand of DNA has an A, the partner or complementary strand has a T. And if there is a G in one strand, it'll be paired up with a C in the complementary strand. In 1953, when Watson and Crick reported the structure of DNA in the famous journal Nature, they ended the paper by suggesting a basic mechanism for its replication, prompted by the base pairing rule, which turned out to be correct.